The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. We're already at the end of June. NBA draft is over. NBA free agency begins tomorrow. 6 p.m. And the days are getting shorter. The sun's going down earlier. It's a great time to be a Pistons fan. It's just, it's weird. Not yet. Not yet. It's close. No, not, you can't say not yet. It's close. Troy Weaver has been a magician. Things are trending up, but I can't get... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to wait to say it when we win a championship. <laughs> I know, but like, we got to humble our expectations here just a little bit. Look at what the Tigers oh are yeah, doing. I'm, oh, listen. Tigers had all the expectations in the world. Came How many expectations? Very flat. I think they had a little excitement. They, they, For I, a minute, and then the season started. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Also, I think everybody still knew Tigers management was a mess. We still, it's different with the Pistons. And with the Pistons, so far. we still have to wait to see how free agency ends up tomorrow. Like I said, things are turning well. But they still need to do some things. It's been an A-plus so far. They still need to do some things. There's still moves to be made. I think it's 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 not likely that it like drops to a C because of what they did yesterday. It's been a home run so far. All right, so let's get into it. NBA draft happened. Um, we'll get right into the Pistons real quickly though. I will say the top three did not go as expected. This was one where the sports betters got it right. Paolo Banchero, Bancaro, uh, went to Orlando number one overall. They didn't bring him in for a workout. They just, yeah, it was one of the excited at the last minute. We're going Paolo. Probably one of the most, uh, like the biggest surprise in recent drafts at number one. Some not pe- really know. Some people, some analysts say they weren't surprised because they figured it was Paolo all along, but who really knows? Yeah. And then Chet went two. Jabari went three. So those top three went. And then the Kings, this is where we got real nervous as Pistons fans. We didn't know what the Kings were going to do. It sounded like they were fading, that they weren't going to get any trade offers. Nobody uh, was biting enough. And as soon as I heard Keegan Murray, I was relieved. Um, it left Jaden Ivey open for the Pistons. Pistons took Jaden Ivey. He gets picked. And I think at that point we all figured we still wanted them to trade for another pick, but yeah, we were all like, this is, yeah, at this least, is successful. You know, after falling to five in the lottery was one of the worst feelings in recent memory for a Pistons fan. We should have been basically guaranteed top four, but, you know, didn't happen. So, we fell to five, very nervous. Got Jaden Ivey, one of the guys that we wanted, one of the top guys in this draft. And then, I think the biggest thing for me was the emotion that he showed. I talk about it a lot where when you draft somebody and they're coming to your town, similar to like last year with Cade, like he had the buffs. Like he bought into being a Detroit Piston. Jaden Ivey has roots in Detroit. I think he said his grandma or something still lives in Detroit or one of his family members still lives in the area. Um, So he has ties to this place, which I think is really important. He was just happy to be in the NBA. Like I said, he he was very emotional. Uh, His mom was super happy for him. And so far what we've seen, he seems all in, which, again, that's all we want. A hard nosed guy that's just gonna go to work every day. Yeah, he he showed he just as much emotion at the the draft press conference the next day when mm-hmm. um they pulled out his dad's I mean his grandfather's Lions jersey, his dad's Detroit Country Day jersey, and his mom's Detroit Shock jersey. Mm-hmm. And then they pulled out his and the tears were flowing. He he obviously wanted to be here. Yeah. 
This, is, this meant something to him. Which them. is very exciting because you know that they're going to give a little bit extra effort. Um, so then we discussed it last week where, and like you said, we wanted to be back in the first round. We thought we could get somebody else of value, but it was kind of starting to feel like it wasn't going to happen. It seemed like all the deal, like I kept thinking it was going to be with the Hornets. That seemed to be the most likely scenario. So when it sounded like the Hornets weren't willing to make a deal, I got real nervous and I didn't know what was going to happen. But then we got to pick 10. Johnny Davis went to Washington. And then it was reported that the Knicks had trade traded pick 11 to the Hornets, which was weird. But then, because we were on Twitter a bit, we were able to figure it out faster than they did on the broadcast. The Hornets had then turned it around, and it turned it into a three-team deal where that 11 pick went to the Pistons. And we were in business. Yeah, and it it became a Woj versus uh, Shams Shams battle where Woj posted Pistons get the pick, yeah, and Shams posted Knicks get the pick. So... It was excitement, and then it was like, what is what is going on? Yeah. So it was a bit weird, but figured it out. And at 11, the Pistons took Jalen Duran. I thought it was at 13. Was it 13? Because 11, the Knicks took oh, G- 11 Usman Dang. That they, yes. Because, yeah. okay, so back it up. Okay, C traded for 11. Yes. Yeah. So that's where it was. That's where I was wrong. Yes. The Knicks traded out of 11. They ended up getting 13. From the Hornets. Yeah. And then the Knicks traded to the Pistons. To the Pistons. Yes. Apologize. Um, so again, at thirteen, at thirteen, the Pistons selected Jalen Duran. Which to me was kind of a steal because a lot of people did not expect him to go thirteen. Yeah. They thought him that he was gonna be a little bit higher, and he kind of fell right into our laps. To me, he's like a perfect fit. We talked about it before. He would have been great. I I was okay with either Jalen Duren or Mark Williams. I just wanted one of those big centers. Um, and thinking more about it, Jalen Duren gives me more of a. I don't I don't want to like draw too many comparisons, but just build and body type. He's he's the closest thing to Dwight Howard. Yes. In terms of body, since Dwight. Yes. So for Pistons fans of old, similar vein of Ben Wallace, but he can do more offensively. And he's more. He he more he works more well in in the pick and roll, I guess. Uh, whereas Ben is just like an outstanding all time defender. Jalen Duran could maybe be a good defender, but he's got all the tools to be an excellent yeah, defender. But he's not a great on ball defender like Ben Wallace was. So that's room to grow. But at least size wise, yes, Ben Wallace, Dwight Howard, that kind of comparison, just big bully ball. Um, and another guy that can catch lobs for this team. So it, it's turning into a little bit of a lob city, which is kind of cool. Yeah, he's He doesn't turn 19 until halfway through the NBA season. Mm-hmm. He's 6'11 and just shredded. He's he's just a specimen in terms of athleticism and build. Yeah. Like from the jump, yeah, lob catcher, defensive presence in the paint, and a factor in the pick and roll, yeah. which is excellent for Kade and Sadiq. Mm-hmm. So and yeah. I think the best part about this trade, basically the Pistons gave up that fifth round or fifth round, that first round pick that they got from that's technically owned by Milwaukee. Yeah. But they got from the Portland trade where they traded Jeremy Grant. So they basically traded traded Jeremy Grant for Jalen Duran, which is great. And it's the fantastic. Knicks came away with nothing, which is sad for Knicks fans, but very funny. Yeah, the Knicks hilarious. The Knicks. <laughs> Got absolutely no one, which is... Well, we we think we know who they're getting, but we'll talk about that later when we talk about free agency. Yeah. We don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> yes. Anyway, they didn't get any new talent, young yeah. talent um, in this draft, which is weird. They traded everything away. They made up cap space, or they were moving cap yeah. space. And, yeah, I don't know. So, I'm not even going to go necessarily with what do you what would you give the Pistons as far as a draft grade. Because I think it's it has to be an A. Um, if you wanted to be real cynical, I would give them a B plus. Because what the heck was that second round pick? Um, in <laughs> Draft and stash. Although I, I watched some highlights and the kid is very talented, 
but it seems like a drafting stash. Yeah, in the um, second round, the Pistons uh, selected Gabriel Procida out oh, of Italy. Uh, Italy. Supposedly, he's the best shooter in the draft, but he's a drafting stash. To me, draft and stash is kind of like an overused thing at this point. Most of the time, it's just a stash, yeah. and you trade them for chips later. Cash, yeah. Where, I don't know. It, it To me, it just never works out. Usually, if if you're an overseas player and you're worth anything, they're going to know about you. Yeah, it's it's rare that people pull off like the Spurs, Manu Ginobili second round. Tony wasn't Tony Parker second round too. Um, I think so, but it it's rare. Maybe it's rare that teams nowadays like Nikola Jokic. Would you consider him the last big Europe European player drafted in the second round? Probably he's the greatest. But yeah, I I can't think of one since that's yeah. made a huge impact after mm-hmm. being drafted in the second round. So yeah. So, Pistons did really good on draft night. Um, We'll get more into the draft, but I want to just stay with this Pistons topic. Pistons have already made more moves, and that was today already. Uh, The Pistons decided they were going to also swing more deals with the Knicks, apparently, because they're like, oh, the Knicks are being dumb. Let's uh, let's Let's tweet off that. Let's take everything we can get. Yeah, so the Pistons have acquired Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks uh, for – and they got like six million dollars in cash. And uh, was it two second, two future seconds? I think. Yeah, like two yeah. future second round picks. And the Knicks basically get nothing. They're they're un- unloading contracts yeah. basically at this point. And I like it. Um, Nerlens Noel, I feel like he's kind of run his course in the NBA to me. He's just, he's just the veteran presence. That's I base I basically think that's all he's. Yeah. What Mason Plumlee was. Yeah. His two years. But Alec Burks, on the other hand, I think he could be a good piece for this team. He, also a veteran presence, but yeah. he, can, he can actually give them really good minutes. So people forget, back in the day, Alec Burks was a great player for the for the Jazz. And I would say great, because he was... Great? I, I think he was there. I, I think he was there. I honestly didn't know where he... I, he was what I used to call a create, a creative 2K player. Really? Because I didn't like. I used to play 2K, mm-hmm. and Alex Burks was there. I didn't know about like where he came from. I used to see Colorado. I was like, I've never seen this dude. Yeah, I don't know. I believe that he he got better. The one or two years before he got hurt, because he's been injured for a long time. Um, he was closing in on like being that 17 to 18 point per game kind of guy. So. That's where I give him, like, great. Um, he was, like, turning in, at least a, as far as a score off the bench that you could use. And then he's been injured, took him a little bit of time, but this last season for the Knicks was really successful, I would say. They had him playing the point, which was strange, but yeah. he did what he could. But he's a guy that, like, every once in a while can give you 30 points. So yeah. I like that off the bench for the Pistons. I think they're going to need something like that. Um, Guy that's been around again. So, I like the move either way. I, th- I think it's really good. Um, one other thing that I have to mention as well, Buddy Bayheim is a two-way player for the Pistons, and I'm <laughs> we ecstatic. Couldn't have, we couldn't have waited for that. <laughs> no. We couldn't have waited for that. Come on. Buddy Bayheim. So is Jimmy my... Bayheim. We're talking about Bayheims. His brother is there, too. So... You got double Bayheim action during Summer League. And he's not Buddy. Must see TV. Jimmy was a better scorer. I hope Buddy Beheim. Buddy makes, is a better shooter, but Jimmy I, was a better scorer. I hope Buddy Beheim makes this roster. I know. So bad. I, I know you do. I already have said that if he makes this roster, I'm buying his jersey. <laughs> um, oh. But I, I think, it, honestly, though, being completely honest, I think he could find a way onto the roster. If he's an elite shooter, if it translates to the NBA, right, he'll find spots on rosters. Yeah. So, uh, to me, I think they're making all the right moves. Even, you know, Braxton Key is a solid player, too. So, like, the two-way players they got, the little trades that they've done, the drafting, Troy Weaver still has our trust, which is fantastic. Yes. So Can't, can't say that for most Detroit organizations in a, like, three, four-year span. Yeah. He's doing something rare. Right. Very rare. Yeah. 
So now we talk, we have to talk about Pistons free agency. And then we'll backtrack. We'll talk about more draft stuff and generic free agency. But we're just trying to get the Pistons through. So now the Pistons still have money to spend. One of their targets was DeAndre Aiden. That one seems of, like it's kind of out of the question. At this one point. of their targets was Miles Bridges. Maybe. Yeah. They're all kind of fading away. Yeah. I'm I'm torn because for one reason, both you and I agree, DeAndre Ayton and Miles Bridges, probably not worth it. Not worth the max. max. No. And that's what they're asking for. So what I like is that the Pistons also feel they're not worth the max. It also depends on what the max looks like for them. Yeah. Because if Miles asked for like between 110 and 120, I'd be okay with that. But anything like over 130, 140, let's not even get to 150. Like I, To me, that's too much for Miles Bridges. But at the same... E- even in today's market. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm nervous that if the Pistons don't get one of those guys, doesn't it seem like it's a failed free agency? No, not to me. Because they're the big names? I don't think it's time to swing for big names, even though they've been in these talks for DeAndre Ayton and Miles Bridges. DeAndre is the big name. So you're saying because he was the starting center on a finals team and demanded that money from Phoenix. So you're saying we need to take one more year. Yes. Finally, ne- somebody agrees with me. <laughs> Listen, we. I've been saying this for years. <laughs> we. I said after this draft, we're yeah. gonna still need one more year. Now. Uh, to me, that's kind of obvious. I, yeah, I, yeah, though there are those Pistons fans that are saying ridiculous things. Yeah, like the 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 Kevin Durant crowd. What are they doing? What what are, what are we even talking about? I mean, I'm all in. I'm all in on Kevin Durant. <laughs> but you know, it's not logical. You no. know, there's no logic to it. I mean, there sort of is, but uh, it's just not plausible <laughs> necessarily. Why would you add a 34 year old? aging superstar that's chasing rings to this team because you're going to chase a ring trying to get the chip anyway (laughs) you're not serious but okay i mean let's let's move on how serious am i um but yeah like next year there are plenty of free agents yes it's a it's a bigger what it's a better crop next lebron james harden russell westbrook chris middleton Kyrie Irving. Those first three, we don't need to bring them up. Neither Kyrie. Chris Middleton, maybe. Kristaps Porzingis. Eh. <laughs> now, some of these guys aren't going to – they're just going to resign. Like, Jokic will probably resign. D'Angelo Russell will be an interesting one. He could even be traded pretty soon. But actually <sighs> – Guys like Vucevic, Barnes, Gallon. There's a ton of good veterans – that are going to be on the open market. Here's the thing, though. I don't want anybody starting over Cade, Ivy, and Sadiq. I don't want anybody starting over them, too. So then you're saying we go get Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> if he wants to come here on a reasonable deal, I wouldn't mind it. Unless we Kuzma get back home. But if we get Bridges. But that that's why the, Bridges is the one I like the most. Because he slides right in at the four. You can have Bagley as his backup. And then Stort and Duran as the two centers mm-hmm. that makes complete sense with the way this roster is formed in the, in the starting lineup. I don't want anybody playing over those starting three. As but so that's where I'm saying, like yeah. if we don't get bridges, then like, is it really worth it to wait a year? Like what if we swing out next year? That That's kind of where it comes into play where it's kind of like, I don't know. Like, it starts to feel like a failure, even though it's it's not. I'm with you. I'm okay with waiting another year. But when we have the option to go after a guy like Miles Bridges or DeAndre Ayton, for that fact, even if they're not worth the max, I'm torn. Here's the thing. It depends on the progression of the players because if Cade's a, I mean, if Cade takes the jump, we believe he will. He's going to be a max player, I mean a max contract type player. If in, if in his second year he's like twenty points, 
seven assists, five rebounds, something like that. He'll be well on his way. I expect Sadiq to average around 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. And he's a keeper. It's, it's to me, the main focus should be the guy, the young guys on this team are what is most important. Taking a big swing, even though next year is a really good free agent class, I still think we're like two, three years away from seriously even thinking about making a serious run in the playoffs. It is not a real idea yet. Yeah. We we talked about this for the past two years, the idea of rushing the process. Mm-hmm. That is the last thing. That was the last thing we wanted to do, but Pistons fans are so greedy for for success again that – they they want to jump the gun, but that's how you mess up. Yeah. What what franchises have just completely rushed their process and it worked? Yeah. You, you do, have to do it right. But I will say you do have to be a little bit careful of yeah, waiting, you can't do it too, of waiting long. too long. The the Joe Dumars get so, stuck in the middle. So but there, there's like a fine line that we're on. And we're right around that area now. So I'm just saying we gotta be a little careful. I don't know if we're around that area yet. There's, it's still a developing thing. Yeah, but so the problem that like start, I don't think they're close to being like Charlotte, who's well, just in no man's land. Well, the even only with Ball. The, the only thing that I'll say is by chance we don't spend money this year, then we don't spend money next year, just by happens chance that nobody wants to come here next year. Then we start running into having to re-sign Sadiq Bay. Resign Cade Cunningham. Those are those are the biggest. That's things where they're not the on their rookie years. can't their their rookie contracts anymore. Then we have to pay them. And then we don't have the extra money laying around. That's the fine line, and that's where we're getting close to. That's that's the only thing that I'm trying to at least point See, out. I'm happy you brought that up because my what's most important to me honestly is that making sure Cade gets the super max, and Sadiq gets what he wants after that to build something that sustains and lasts long you have to make sure those those players you started with that are already showing signs of being high level players Mm -hmm. make sure they're happy they're content and they're paid and then you build out the rest yeah taking a big swing is not but that's also why you got to spend money now because otherwise it's going to get used towards that to me, but if we already to have me, if, you the, are, if you already have the players in place, I don't think you have to spend big right now. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is that we have available money right now. Yes. To throw at somebody, but if we don't spend it, then that money has to go towards re-signing these players. But if we sign, if we get a guy like Miles Bridges, then we can still re-sign Sadiq or Cade by going under the salary because we own their player options and stuff. I'm I'm all in for the Miles Bridges is probably like at my number one spot right now for guys I'd like to sign mm-hmm. out of on a kind of reasonable deal I guess because he's still going to get a lot of money yeah but if we didn't get Miles Bridges and like they signed TJ Warren I would not be mad I would honestly I would be fine if they signed somebody like TJ Warren and just had another quality vet scoring presence mm-hmm. because I'm more focused on the young guys. Now signing Miles Bridges, he's another young guy that would be a perfect addition to the formula, but we, I don't I'm not, I'm not sure we do. We have to see what happens. We have to see the offer Charlotte gives him and then what, how the Pistons match. Right. That's really what matters at this point because Charlotte has come out and said, we plan on keeping miles. Yeah. So, and Miles has said on social media, if they don't pay me the money I think I deserve, I'm probably going to Detroit. Yeah. So we we just have to see so what here Charlotte the, offers. Here are the numbers, technically. The max extension that Miles Bridges could get from the Hornets, which they said right now they're unwilling to pay him, is five years, $173 million. See, yeah, that's too much. That's the too other much. teams, any other team can give him a max contract of four years, $130 million. That's that's and better. Then, that's better. And then Charlotte could match that. So that's just the numbers yeah. game. I'm 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 not paying him five years one seventy five. So it's it's tricky, and that's that's where I'm I'm saying because 
then if we don't get anybody, which I'm I'm okay with, I agree with you. I'm I'm okay with ultimately, but it puts even more pressure next year. That's that's kind of the big thing is we could do it now, somewhat get it over with, and then we'll have somebody before we have to pay Sadiq and Cade. I I can I understand the mindset of thinking this could be a make or break situation. But I think there will be so many I think there will be a few more of those in the next few years as this young core continues to grow and develop. Because I think like this draft was a big make or break situation and they passed with an A. Mm-hmm. Now would you say free agency is a lesser make or break? Because if they didn't hit in this draft, I think we'd ev- it would be even more desperate. Like, we, we wouldn't be happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> and talking about these, like, situations with so many different, like, sides and variables if they didn't hit in the draft. Right. So the fact that they hit in the draft, mm-hmm. to me, shows that they don't have to be desperate. Yeah. And they can just continue to make smart moves. I agree. Just trying to give the, trying to give you all the sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, you neither of us are on the deep end of crazy Pistons fandom. It also looks. Just let me double check this real quick. I don't know. This just. I was trying to update my free agency thing to look forward. To next year to no the following years so oh you want to go (laughs) deep into the future so i'm just trying to see where that issue occurs 2024 is Kawhi, clay tobias pascal cj mccollum carl anthony devin booker uh demar derozan some of these guys might be retired by then (laughs) maybe it's a bunch of older players like eric gordon mike conley are they still going to be around Okay, so they're not even – I can't even see, like, the rookie contracts, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, it's not updating enough. I was trying to figure out when Cade uh, and Sadiq are up. <clears throat> nice little silent pause break in between. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so – because Cade's a four-year deal. So – Yeah, so if we don't hit this year, and then we don't hit next year, then Caden City got to get paid. That's kind of verifying. They're getting paid no matter what. There's, they're they're getting there. There oh. there is no to me there is no scenario where they don't get paid. Well, yeah, but I'm just unless saying, there's like injury or yeah, it's like we want them bad to be things pistons. start happening. Yeah, outside of bad luck scenarios, I see them getting paid. Yeah, especially Cade is getting that big bag. So anyway, free agency opens up tomorrow. We will get back to free agency in just a minute, but I want to go backtrack, go back to the NBA draft, talk about some of the other teams that uh, we think did a good job. Who would you say had the best draft outside of the Pistons? Because a lot of people think the Pistons won the draft just overall in general. Uh, What's another team that you saw that you think made big moves last week? I'll bring first I'll bring up Orlando drafting Paolo. Having Franz and Paolo at the three and four, I think, is just it unlocks so much for the rotations you could put around those two because they're they're different players with size and just so much skill. So I I give Orlando credit for that. But I think OKC came out with an incredible haul. Getting Chet Holmgren. Trading for the uh, Usman Jang pick at 11, and then drafting Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara and Jalen Williams out of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I think all of those guys could be contributed. Usman Jang is somewhat of a project, but he's 6'10, can handle, has some playmaking ability, and can shoot a little. So he's something worth taking a chance on. Jalen Williams out of Santa Clara, he's a, he's a scorer and just a steady player. Mm-hmm. And then Jalen Williams out of Arkansas. He can shoot. He's 6'10". He can play defense. He can guard almost one through five. So they they got something different in every pick, and I think they had a really great haul. 
Yeah, see, I'm a, I'm a little on the opposite. I think the Thunder kind of they got a little too trade happy. Really? To me, um, I think the pick for number two was easy, but Usman Jang they gave up. Uh, what was it? Let me let me double check. Yeah, they they traded three first round picks for Usman Jang. But the th- see the thing is, I think. They, I think Sam Presti realizes after this draft, he really won't need to use picks much after this. And how many does he have for the next three years? Yeah. What, like 10? He's got to start unloading them at some point. Yeah. And if not now, then like when? That's that's my thinking on that one. Yeah. Like why not stop, start un- offloading these picks right now and just start focusing on the roster you've, you've put together in the past two, three years? Yeah. I don't know. And then Jalen Williams at 12 just felt – it was like, a bit of a reach. Like but they just handed him, handed us Jalen Williams, basically. I don't know. It, nitpicking. You mean handed us Jalen Duran? Is that what you mean? Jalen Duran. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So, I I th- I feel like San Antonio had an underrated haul. Some people might think their like guard and two guard depth is starting to be too much because they took Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley. Mm-hmm. But I think Lonnie Walker is out the door soon. Devin Vassell is the starter at the two or three, whichever. Yeah. And I think Malachi Branham gives them more consistent scoring than Lonnie Walker from the jump. And Blake Wesley, I I like him taking those two guards back to back. They're they're different types of guards, so I I guess it's all right. But some people think the Jeremy Sohan pick was a reach. Mm-hmm. I had him at nine in the in our mock draft. One of the few I'll probably hit on. <laughs> and I think he's he's just great energy, high-level defense, might be the best defender to come out of the draft, and high offensive potential. Yeah. I liked I what like the Rockets – I, li- I like what the Rockets did. Yeah. Uh, I mean – Your boy was in that class. They got a drop – they dropped to – Jabari Smith dropped to three, which I think is a blessing in disguise for the Rockets. And then they got Tari Eason, who I've said I, I like in the draft. Um and then at 29... I couldn't believe he dropped that far. Yeah. I, I don't like him. But at that pick where he was projected was a steal. Ty Ty Washington out of Kentucky. So being able to get basically three guys either before their projections or right around their projection, I think is a really good draft. And being able to get three first-round picks is good. So I think the Rockets did good. I think the Warriors honestly did it again. And people won't realize for a few years, like when they picked Jordan Poole, Patrick Baldwin is a high-level shooter. Mm-hmm. And if he learns under Stephen Clay, he should be able to slide in and not have many problems. And then Ryan Rollins at 44 out of Toledo, played for the family from Michigan. He's just a scorer. And with the ball in his hands, he just knows how to make things happen. Mm-hmm. So those picks at 28 and 44 for the Warriors – I think they they just their scouting department is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then who would you say besides the Knicks lost to draft? Because the Knicks ended up with no one. So a lot of the a lot of the teams that are like playoff contenders, I wasn't big fans of many of their moves like. The Bucks taking Marjan Beauchamp, mm-hmm. like get yeah, he's he's a guy you just I don't I guess he's gonna be like back and forth from the G League. Yeah, I don't see him ever making a like big impact. Uh, I like the Oche Agbaji Cleveland pick, but the other picks I think weren't amazing. Yeah. Jeff and Isaiah Mobley, um, Isaiah Mobley to go with his brother is cool, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> Khalifa Diop I don't know much about him. Luke Travers out of Australia I really don't know much about him. Yeah, the one that surprised me. Uh, was Memphis a little bit. David Roddy at 23. David Roddy at 23, <laughs> trading for it, and trading for Jake LaRavia at 19. Like, Here's the thing. Because because they haven't failed on a pick yet, I know. I just have to – it's it's going, like, out there with it now. But if they if they make it work, it, it would – Jake LaRavia can score and shoot at 6'10". Yeah. And it's David just, Roddy is just fun. It's just questionable, you know, just one of those things where they're taking swings and 
I felt like they were positioned better to not have to take those swings. But at the same time, you can be taking swings because you're a playoff team. You know who I think is in the worst position in the East right now? Hmm. Washington. Yeah. If you give Brad Beal that contract, what are you expecting? Playoffs. Do you, is that? Do you really think that's? They were in the playoffs not too long ago, so. I'm so, just uh, but uh, my thing is, do you really expect Danny Avdia to just like take a big step? Do you th- do you expect Rui Hachimura to take a huge step? Chris Asporzingis ended the season well with Washington, but do you expect him to stay fully healthy all season? You just draft Johnny Davis. Are you really going to pair him with Brad Beal? I mean, does that I, I, that doesn't make much sense to me? Doesn't make much sense to you, Johnny Davis and Brad Beal in a backcourt. That I just don't see what what the direction is of Washington, mm-hmm. and they have a bunch of players that are like solid or good. They, they just traded Contavious Caldwell Pope and Ish Smith to Denver, and got back Will Barton and who else was it? Monte Morris. Who do you think won that trade? I think Washington won that trade. I think okay. Wal- I think Will Barton's the best player in that trade. And then you think Will Barton has been? I think Contavious. I think KCP is more valuable i think because he's been a high level defender will barton is a bucket getter but kcp was like one of the best defenders on a championship team yeah and then ish smith and monte morris is kind of a wash to me somewhat monte Monte is is a really good back monte is younger um but ish smith ish is on his 13th team congratulations i think he broke the nba record yeah but yeah I, i don't know what washington i don't know what the vision is yeah and i i don't see brad beal getting them to I don't think he's the player everybody thinks he is at this point hmm. Interesting. I think he needs to be added to a situation like Boston or like Miami or something he's not carrying a team to like the Eastern Conference Finals I don't think that's happening okay he's a very good two guard but I, I just I don't think he's a superstar hmm. interesting okay I don't think he is okay um. Yeah. Well, I think that's just segues us into the rest of free agency. Yeah, you didn't have any losers. Um. Who did I say? How about that Shaden Sharp Portland pick? Yeah, I d- I didn't like it. I didn't. I don't think it's. And I, the reason I don't like it is just the way that Portland has postured themselves, saying that they're trying to get back to the playoffs and that they're retooling. You got Dame and Jeremy. Yeah, so. <laughs> Congratulations. So, I don't know. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, honestly, I would kind of say Atlanta because they didn't – they were one of those teams that was said to make moves in this draft. They didn't really move anything. They moved their second-round pick, and then they drafted A.J. Griffin in the first round. Have, having him fall to 16 was pretty surprising. I didn't expect that. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I felt like they should have – like they should have pushed their trades a little harder because it sounds like Atlanta's on the edge of a debacle at the moment. Them and John Collins. Yeah, because yeah. they were trying to trade almost anybody. I was ready for Kevin Herter to be a piston, <laughs> but uh, that didn't happen. So, and then like I said, like Memphis kind of, but they can get away with it. So, I love. I kind of this kills me to say, but I kind of like Wendell Moore in Minnesota. I think he does give them some. I like Walker production. Kessler in Minnesota, and like I, I kind of like their class. Mm-hmm. Him and Walker Kessler. Yeah, they did pretty good to solidify some spots. Yeah. Alrighty, let's talk about free agency and some trade rumors to finish this off. The one that I want to bring up, since we just kind of said Minnesota, is Dejounte Murray has been heavily rumored, and nobody knows what's going on, which I like because. He plays into it on social media. I ultimately think they're not going to trade him or anything, and I don't think he wants to necessarily be traded. But just seeing it is fun. And a lot of people have started linking DeJounte Murray to, like, a Minnesota where you could get rid of D'Angelo Russell, take DeJounte Murray, and that would be a little bit of an upgrade. And That would be a big upgrade at a point. Like, right. Minnesota could be looking real good. The main one I've seen is Atlanta. Yeah, that's another one. 
because of the John Collins stuff that there supposedly John Collins wants to be out of Atlanta. So I don't know. It, it's an interesting one. I'm sure there'll be some uh, possible sign and trades tomorrow as well. Yeah, that that whole Dejounte situation. I've been confused, but I started to think. I think in two years they have to pay him, mm -hmm. and he's going to ask for like a max big time contract. And because they're they're in a situation right now where the odds of them making a deep run in the playoffs is slim to none in the next few years. Yeah. So do you want to give DeJounte this contract? Or do you want to start, like, shopping around right now to mm -hmm. see what the offers are? Yeah. So I, I can understand it from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, some other notable ones, like you said, Bradley Beal, he has to decide if he wants to stay with Washington. It looks like he's going to. Um, but it's not for sure. John Wall is planning to sign with the Clippers, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice if we could see John Wall again, uh, just even in a game, because he's hardly played if at all. he signs all. with the Clippers, I, I have a very good feeling that he's going to play too. almost – He's going to play most of the season if he gets signed by the Clippers. I do too, but – He's going to look revitalized. It would just – I mean, we haven't seen him in, it feels like, forever. Three years. So, he played 40 games for Houston, and it seemed like, like mm -hmm. 10. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting one if he does end up going there. Um, actually, an interesting one right now is James Harden because James Harden, if he opts into his player option, he significantly cuts the Sixers' salary to be able to make moves. So a lot of people are suggesting that he should opt out go for a slight decrease in money so that the Sixers can bolster their the uh, the rest of their roster and do something there. But hasn't really been any indications of whether he's going to do that or not. Um, I think that's another one that if, if he doesn't, that tells you where James Harden's head's at. And it's pretty nerve-wracking. Um, let's see, another one. Gary Harris is making more money than Zach Levine. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, but Gary Harris is a unrestricted free agent. Zach Levine, unrestricted free agent. Zach Levine's another one of the big ones. I'm kind of surprised that he's been in a lot of talks because I thought Chicago is, like, ready to make the playoffs, and they're about to – like, if Zach Levine walks, like, they're on the verge of blowing it up, I guess, is – Weird to me, I guess, that Alonzo injury kind of faltered their their whole season. But I hope that Zach Levine goes back to Chicago. Um, the Spurs were another one of those teams that has been talked about. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, Torian Prince already signed. DeAndre Ayton, like we talked about, is a big one. If DeAndre Ayton doesn't go to Phoenix... And he doesn't go to Detroit. Where do you think he ends up? I, I've seen uh, San Antonio potentially. I really have no idea outside, <laughs> like outside of San Antonio, because mm -hmm. like I don't know what teams are trying to trade for Rudy Gobert. What teams need a big man and have like the cap space and money right now? Yeah, I mean, there's that's the question. There's a decent amount of teams that have money, but not not as much. I know the Pistons are like the biggest, have the most calorie, salary cap space. So, yeah, I don't like, I don't think Sacramento was about to get DeAndre Ayton. Like, yeah, they need a big man, but I, I don't see that happening. Um, I think I heard Indiana, but like they, they have, they have Isaiah Jackson and Jalen Smith. It seems like they're rebuilding with them. So, It'd be kind of confusing if he signed with Indiana. I wouldn't. I don't see that. I don't see Atlanta with Clint Capella. Yeah, that's I. There aren't many options in my head outside of like Detroit and San Antonio, maybe. Yeah, um, I'm looking. I don't have exact numbers of how much available cap space teams have, but looking at this projections, some of the top teams are Detroit, Orlando. Indiana, San Antonio, Portland, New York. 
I think that's kind of the mainstays, as far as I know, as far as I can tell. So things are things are looking tight. But yeah, I I don't see him having more than like two or three options mm-hmm. if he doesn't resign with Phoenix. Right. What if what if it just comes down to him resigning with Phoenix? It might because it might be a money thing where you know no one's willing to offer him a max, and even if you know the Suns aren't willing to offer him the max extension, it could be just below it, but higher than what other teams can give them. So that that is a possibility. But it's already been kind of shown that Phoenix is unwilling to give him the max, which I think teams are slowly starting to wisen up to these max contracts. That you can't just be throwing them out to anybody uh, these days. Marvin Bagley is one that I think the Pistons need to make sure that they secure. Yeah. He is restricted, so should be able to, but we'll have to wait and see. I I don't I don't see the odds being some other team just throwing him a big contract or something. Right. Uh, PJ Tucker is a big one, even though he's 38 years old, basically. Another contender is going to go. For um, him. he's been linked to a bunch of different teams. Um, the most notable one, I believe, was the Sixers. I think that's why they're trying to get Harden to opt out so that they could sign somebody like P.J. Tucker to add that defensive guy on their team. Has he played for the Sixers? Probably. <laughs> I can't remember in my head. He's played for the Heat. He's played for Phoenix. He played yeah. for the Bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, The other interesting one, I think, is Colin Sexton, only 23 years old. He's projected to not make, like, a ton. People don't have to throw a giant bag at him. It seems like there's just no talk about him. Yeah. And and people have just forgotten. Like, I know he's coming off of an injury, but just the season before, he averaged, like, 24 points a game. He had one of his best seasons, and he looked really good doing it. So, I think almost any team that's looking for a point guard should – consider him as an option um especially thinking like indiana indiana's been looking to move on from malcolm brogdon and i mean chris duarte has been rumored in certain things so well, they they just drafted ben matherin though so yeah but i think it, they're looking at him to be their two of the future right but they're still going to need like an actual point guard not the talking about the pacers yeah did you forget about what they oh, traded yeah. for from Sacramento. I guess you're right. Halliburton. I guess you're right. Yeah. You're right. He's the guy. Okay. Yeah. It It is strange, though. I, I have no idea where he could end up. But, okay. Then, or what he's going to ask. Then for. I'll let this segue into the next thing. Jalen Brunson. Supposedly, the Knicks are all in on Jalen Brunson. They're going to give him a max contract. And I think they're crazy. Because you could get Colin Sexton for half the price. And he's not even close to half the player. He's basically the same player. I think Colin Sexton could be a better player than Jalen Brunson. So can I. So, I don't know. I don't know what teams are thinking. I I get that, you know, again, he was injured. You never know what's going to happen off of an injury. But I think it's worth taking the chance if you don't have to spend all that money on Jalen Brunson, who has kind of only showed it one time. I don't know. Outside outside of, what, four or five games in these past playoffs, mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson has showed that he's a very high-quality second option as a point guard and can give you scoring. That's what I wanted him to, before Aiton and Mosbridge's talk came up, I wanted him to come in and just take, like, some pressure off of Cade and Sadiq mm-hmm. as a point guard for the Pistons. Yeah. That's that's all he should be, in my opinion. Yeah. Not the number one go to max player guy. Mm-hmm. It, that it makes no sense at all. Yeah. But it's the Knicks. Right. It is New York. Um, another big name that I would say is Anthony Simons. There's been a lot of talk that other teams are definitely interested. I can see why. Um, kid's only twenty three and as soon as like Dame got hurt this year, CJ McCollum was shipped. He played well. Yeah, he, he was averaging like 25, 26. Yeah. Like really getting off. Like he's showing all-star potential, so that's one to watch out for, I would say, tomorrow. And then <laughs> I didn't even realize. 
Andre Drummond's a free agent. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so funny. And nobody, his career went downhill so fast. Nobody's talking about it. Do Do you remember when he got signed by the Lakers and everybody assumed it was like yeah, <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Right. They haven't been the same since they signed him. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I just see? I was quickly trying to go through. Oh, Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson did end up did end up. Was it four years, sixty million? Yes. Which is a very good contract for him. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's a good move for the Knicks. One of their few good moves that they've done. But a lot of good um veterans out there again, as usual, kind of throughout um free agency typically happens. But, you know, guys like I mean, I'll still put Andre in that that column. Andre Drummond is in there. Um Guys like, um, where did I just see, like, Victor Oladipo. That's an interesting yeah. one. I, I don't know about the rumor about him in Detroit. It yeah. doesn't make much sense. So, we got some little rumors from our buddy Chris talking about some other little options for the Pistons. One of them being Victor Oladipo. Um, also, Bobby Portis, Bryn Forbes, and one other person that I can't think of. Out of those kind of guys, who do you who would you want the Pistons to take? Name the people again that you said. Bryn Forbes, Bobby Portis, Victor Oladipo. Bryn Forbes. And I am a hundred percent in agreement with you. Um Yeah, but the I, whole the whole Corey Joseph thing just makes it so, yeah, weird. Yeah. So I like Bobby Portis a lot. I think he'd be really good. I just think our front court's actually starting to get a little bit crowded. Yeah. Um and I would rather just take a pure shooter. Yeah, he actually he could slide in at the two whenever. Yeah, he could just come in and shoot. Yeah, so I, so I like the idea of Bryn Forbes just kind of being a spot up shooter for this team potentially. Um, yeah. So, I'm I'm with you, but Bobby Portis, he would be nice to have. I just don't know where he'd fit in because, like I said, we're getting to that point where we have a, a decent amount. Do we still have Frank Jackson? Uh, he's. I don't think so. I think we decided to move on from him and Luca Garza. That was what the okay the plan was. R.I.P. Luca Garza's time in Detroit. Yeah, I had that's why kind I'm, of unnecessary. That's why I'm very hopes for so. The reason that they moved Luca Garza and Frank Jackson was to make a spot for Braxton Key and Buddy Beheim. So we lose Luca, get Buddy, kind of evens out for me. I'm okay with it. Not my favorite, but it happens. Yeah. Um, other than that, there's a bunch of other, you know, young guys that are out there that still trying to make a name for themselves, but they're out there like Bull Bull. I wouldn't mind seeing somebody swing at him. Um, Gary Payton the second is unrestricted. Yeah. Well, I assume he's going to resign with Golden State. I don't know why he would go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, Let's see, Troy Brown Jr. is a restricted free agent. Malik Monk is un- unrestricted. He could be a good piece yeah, for somebody. Yeah, but I have heard that Malik Monk is willing to take less money to come back to L.A., hmm. so that would be interesting. And, yeah, not too much. We haven't really gotten a ton of crazy free agency news the yeah. last couple of days. Everything's kind of died out. It's probably going to start, like, later or early tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be tomorrow. So, it it's been spotty with the information that we've been able to get because it was it was wild during draft time, and now it's kind of died down. Where like the hype around DeAndre Ayton and Miles Bridges has kind of cooled off because we're not sure who's going to offer a max. We think somebody will, but we're not sure. And it'll be really really interesting if nobody offers a max, and then it's just kind of a bidding war what teams will do. So. What do you want to see the Pistons do tomorrow? I want them to sign Miles Bridges to a four-year contract under $130 million. If it's exactly at 130, fine. But I I don't I don't want it's it's probably gonna be over 130. I I don't want it. Well, the max is 130. Okay, the max is four year one four years 130. So. Yeah, even though I want less on that contract, I'll take it. 
and I'll gladly shuffle him into the four spot. You ask what it, what I, what I think is going to happen, or what, uh, I, what I want, do you to, want happen. to happen. That's what I want to happen. Okay. Yeah, for them to just sign Miles Bridges and just close off the summer with a plus. Yeah. But okay. for 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 it to end that perfectly, I, I, the odds might not be that high. Yeah. Is I'll there? See. Is there a specific role player that you would like to see on the team? Maybe outside the names that we said. Outside of the names, or like the three names that we brought up, you know, that were rumored of, of the for the one, Pistons. Of the ones we brought up, I'd like Brent Forbes. But is there somebody else that you saw that you would like to be a Piston? Uh, if we didn't draft uh, Jaden Ivey, I would have took a swing. I would have liked them to take a swing on Colin Sexton. I would have really liked him at the two. Mm-hmm. But we have Jaden Ivey. Uh, none of these names are really like standing out to me in a major way. Yeah, like I like the guys we have, which is pretty great to say that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want Carmelo Anthony. I don't want Rajon Rondo. I'll take Carmelo. <laughs> really? Just just one year just in that. Detroit. I like the Tracy McGrady year. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Dante Divincenzo. I'll say that. Again, trying to get yes. the backcourt. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, if Bol Bol could pass his physical, I'd like to have him. But yeah, to see if he comes back. Yeah, I, I have no idea what's going on with him at all. Yeah, I also think I would want the Pistons to go after Miles Bridges. I've be, I've become anti DeAndre Ayton, and I think I'd rather go for Miles Bridges because then you have you literally have like a Lob City team with Jaden Ivey. Um, Miles Bridges, Jalen Duran, I mean, even Cade. But I think it'd be exciting to watch. It'd be entertaining. Uh, a couple guys that are, you know, have ties to Detroit or Detroit and uh, Michigan and stuff. So that's what I'd like to see. Um, if they fail on those, I would just like to see them bolster up this lineup. Like I said, the backcourt especially. Um we just got a lesson, Corey Joseph's minutes, all right? That's that's the goal here. That is the battle cry for, because for most of this season. I, I know my guy Saban Lee is just – he's getting shuffled back, so I it, might as he, well – He might be back and forth between the G League, and which sucks. Yeah. Might as well forget about it, but, yeah. I, I just want to see the Pistons make some moves. Um, spend a little bit of money. If they don't get those max guys, let's not spend all of it. Let's uh, see what we can get next year. And – I mean, maybe try to make some more moves. Like, there's, there's been talk of Kelly Olynyk being being moved or something like that. So, m- maybe there's some options there still. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, we've uh, run out of time. So, next week, we're going to recap what we did in free agency. Um, maybe we'll do a fun episode. Maybe we'll have a top ten list after talking about free agency. Unless there's a ton to talk about, we'll see. Um, and we're already getting close to, like, like – NFL stuff is coming back up. Uh, college football, of course. Yeah. So, right at the end of basketball, starting to run back into football. So, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We will see you guys next time. Probably right now. Pistons 2028 NBA champions. Look out. <laughs>